Hello and welcome back. This is Ed, Midwest Landscaping, www.uniqueenvironments.com. Back here in Irvine, just want to show you an update on the subsurface irrigation that was installed today. As you can see, I have the grid laid out and we have our subsurface uh, line laying on top of the, uh, the area where this crop is going to go. And the reason why I have it on top is I'm going to put a layer of uh, topper over top of the um, subsurface drip lines and uh, then we'll put the carapio on top of that so instead of trenching out and putting the subsurface drip line in the trenches what I choose to do is lay that pipe on the top of the area where we're going to put in the uh, ground cover or the turf and I bring in either topsoil or topper to cover those lines and to also to build up the nutrient level where we're going to put down the, um, the the plant material either ground cover or turf have um, the stainless steel staples that we have about every two feet and uh, the spacing is about 12 inches on center there's some areas where it's kind of odd so I had to do some uh, modifications and make sure that all the areas are going to get water and that everything is pretty equal from the standpoint of the distance between rows. Uh, this hole right here is going to be where the uh, pressure regulator and the backflow, actually the backflow is going to, and the clean out is going to be right here. It's not a backflow, it's actually the, the end of the run and the clean out. The pressure release and everything will be right down in this hole here with uh, inside of a round valve box over here there'll be another valve box where we have the uh, pressure regulator filter that's in the ground we'll be able to attach and attach and unattach that filter once i um, do some modifications to that hookup just wanted to get it hooked up to see how we're going to run this and how it's going to go and so i'll be remodifying that so there'll be easy access to get to the filter regulator pressure regulator that's down in that in there and we go on down to the other end. We have uh, T's in there that comes off of the, the header line and comes down through the middle. Have about a uh, half a foot from the edges to make sure that the edges do get water because the concrete edges in any solid surface tends to heat up a little bit more than other areas and it dries out faster. So. What I do is when I do the installation of the subsurface drip, I try to take it within six inches of the um, of the edge, so that way we can be able to make sure we have adequate water that's going to flow right to the edge of the of the project area that we're working in. And we use Netafim for our subsurface drip. It's rated to be either above ground or underground. It has the self-flushing emitters. And when the uh, system comes on. The emitters actually push out any debris or anything that may be inside the emitter and uh, Netafim has been known for many years to be uh, the leader in drip irrigation and subsurface irrigation so um, there's a requirement anyway here at the job site to put in Netafim for the rest of the, the project and it just so happens that Corrupt Utility Ground Cover is one of the ground covers are one of the plant materials that we can use as a substitute for a lawn back here in the backyard. So that's your update for today. Um, stay tuned. Getting close to a wrap here. Got to pick up the carapia, put in the mulch in the front, and we'll be able to call this a project wrap. Ed Wallace, Midwest Landscaping. Tips and ideas. www.uniqueenvironment.com. Sure to uh, Give me some comments, punch that like button, please. Share this with your friends and colleagues, business associates. And let me know if the tips and ideas that I pass on in my videos are um, helpful. And give me some ideas of what I can do to improve them, but also some topics that I can t cover. I don't have a bunch of music in my videos, but maybe one day I'll take some time and edit them. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.